brief to the point. Uh, probably would prefer to have more questions than, because it's difficult to talk about implementations now. But what we can do is we can share the experiences and uh, what we feel till now, the kind of success that we have seen with the implementation of Julia. It's been a quite a long path. Um, we had it for about one and a half years now. Uh, it was not to our satisfaction, but it was very encouraging. Once we got into a stage where it was at a level of uh, implementation, we have taken it to the next level. It is going into production in about two more weeks, and the next day production, it's fingers crossed, a uh, lot of uh, dependencies on it. Uh, just to give this, this is just to give you the context, just the complexity, not from what we do. Um, it is, it's, when you say number one, it's essentially that the millions of queries we talking about from the real life, which translates into uh, a multiplication factor of those number of queries for the complexity of the query. Uh, it is about all B2B, B2C products and services, so it's a very long tail. Uh, there are multitudes and clusters of different rule sets. Because all one rule set will not fit everything, and it is across a large part of India, which also means that from a location availability and distribution, it's a multi distributed system with fragmentations and clusters. So, net net, it's a beast we build up, and uh, how we scale it has always been the issue. Uh, what we have done the, the project on, which is going live, is just on a proper subset of it which looks at the sort of the complexity to the whole hog, but it is currently not in production. So there is a learning process and the learning digest comes in and that's a production process. So what we have worked on now, which used to take a lot of time because it's an end of day process in the night, is a learning part which learns the whole night and then it gives a digest in the morning for the production system to use, just to get on that part. So this we call is essentially called the pricing engine. It effectively tells you how much to charge a business for or what is the kind of demand, how to prioritize that. So uh, one part is obviously the money, which is important for any business. The other part is to give the SLA. So if I know that these are one of my part queries and I expect a lot of queries on that part and I want to minimize and have my expected, expected uh, delivery time to a fixed level, I would rather push my top 10 percent of query in 50 percent of my best machines and the remaining 90 percent can take the remaining 50 percent. So all of these things happen and, and that's how we do it. Uh, it matches demand and supply, obviously, it's an econometric model. The, this is where the parts are. It is a long tail, it's about uh, 236k categories, so this is 100,000 100, is the four focal category we have done. There are these many locations from where you make some money or the other. Uh, India has about 46,000 pin codes and our pricing is at the pin code level, so you can see the complexity. And we do use velocities, when I say velocity it means current trend because if we don't do it, surely would always be the most popular movie. Uh, but you have to give time, epoch, <coughs> flexibility to what is currently on and that is what we mean by velocity. It is our time series historical values and finally, of course, you have to come to a price point for every computer model. So if you look at that, it's essentially a N cross M cross P problem, where each of them are in lakhs and thousands. I will use lakhs, I'm in India, I love using that back then. Uh, pricing packages also add to the complexity because every time, the so velocity also takes in this factor. If I have had the success of selling a gold, it means my pricing is right. So I can charge a slightly entry premium. So that's how you keep on looking at it. How much you have sold also tells you how the demand is reflecting and changing and how there's a chance, chance for a pricing arbitrage. Similarly, if you're not able to sell over a particular time, how do you drop the price? And all this is happening dynamically. And finally, this is there. This is what you're going through every night. This is what the computer is learning from. Roughly about three terabytes per city. On an average, the large cities like Bombay, Delhi, this would be over five. Small cities like Pune, Kolkata, it would be probably over one and a half. And what, this is what it, it has to give. It has to give subscription local merchants. It has to do with inventory. I just explained to you the amount of booking done is the inventory computation availability. And 
it has to be also used during negotiation. So on a negotiation, on the fly, you're getting all this learning and you're doing the best fit and you're telling the guy sitting across the table from you, being used by a person who has no idea of technology, what this has to do and that has to happen. And on top of that, it is an illogical system. It's just rule based. There are no laws, there are no, no, no logic. It's just business experience embedded in rules and doing some sort of a data level filtration kind of thing. <coughs> what are the challenges? Challenges obviously of search. Where you start from? There's a whole start problem. Uh, you have to go at the relevant search results. It's nice to say, but define relevant very difficult. It is not uh, anything to do with logic again. It's perception based. So relevance is purely a rule set. There is no logic why a guy in Chennai would kill me if I give a saloon 10 kilometers away and a guy in Mumbai would love me for the same thing, for the same distance. This is just local learnings, this just happened. You can't program for this, you just learn from it and you apply it to your pricing. So it's completely based on mathematical models, when you say mathematical models, it's a Bayesian note. Given he is here, what are the most likely paths? What are the different ways? And you have learned this over time and you continuously keep on learning. So they come with some, the performance impact, and in retrospect, they build over time, they evolved. So they have the complexity of going from A to B to C to D to Z. And now we can crunch it and do it. So we need to move towards mathematical models for the realization we have been having after seven years of experimentation and some sort of sedimentation of the rules. And this is what the times were taking. The current PHP code, of course, it was a PHP mindset. Uh, with a lot of C modules, which is not talked up here, but it used to take about 40 minutes for the duration. This is not bad given the kind of data and all that we're doing. But this is great. We are able to do the same in four seconds. Talk about experience and tools and the right charts. So that's the kind of crunching we are able to do. And what that does is it makes us free to experiment on something on a realistic basis to apply more, more rules. Maybe make that again 40 minutes, but probably do 40,000 times the computation of the complexity if we need to. And this we are implementing still. This is actually not very easy. It sounds very, what is there in that? Uh, it's because of the complexity and uh, favorability on that. But because our merchant can take multiple inventories and multiple codes and you have to be fair to him, you have to distribute him so that the others don't get the solution. By the amount of leads you're getting and saying, oh, you have to solve for the end. So that should not be the thing. The fairness, arbitration has to be there. Second, we obviously will go into a, a recommendation engine. Um, kind of like a hodgepodge between a graph TV and a kind of cluster analysis and some sort of a peripheral node which is coming as a conjugate of its graph and uh, this. So, ready engine, we will go with this sort of a edge base. Uh, we still are waiting on that. We may replace that with some sort of a older uh, route. We would look at, excuse me, that. Yes. We would look at the, the, old, uh, uh, the older databases like some sort of file system also. Yes. So, we, we are looking at that part. And this is where we are still implementing and in search, how do you solve the whole stuff problem? Um, so effectively what happens is at 5 o'clock in the morning, my robot starts firing queries, posing as user and sort of looks at past results and keeps training the system. By 8 o'clock, things are cached, looking at trends, looking at past few days analysis and we are ready to meet the demand of the day without really computing. So the whole start problem essentially is uh, we do it so that uh, after we have done our simulation run, about 85% queries don't even hit the database, they are just served in the cache. That's, that's the learning that we have. This is the rough deployment architecture, very simple. Uh, we have made it as an independent entity and this and this are, so this is, for us in just Dell, the database was always more of a data sync. The search also today actually happens on our own C data structures. But we keep a copy of everything on the DB. For the moment, in, except for this part, there is a digest ETL which converts this data into C structures on which the search happens. That we are keeping a Beirut to the deployment edition of that part and doing the same synthesis of this data 
individual structures for the logic to work from their part. Ah, right. This is uh, just one sample uh, to give the kind of benchmark. So there are about we have looked at 286 hot categories, number of pin codes in Bombay. So this 286 is a category from we where I mean obviously Bombay has about two lakh categories. From that, the top one percent category is what we think. Point uh, one percent actually, and there we are looking at the 236 pin codes, and this is the kind of rows and things that we are doing. That we are saying is the maximum number of categories a motor user would take. Remember in B2B, that number of categories a particular user's legs can be in thousands. There is, he makes nuts and bolts, and there are thousands of types of nuts and bolts. All of these would go as categories for them. This is just a model user. Now, this is the kind of compute you are doing for the budget calculation for a single model check on the kind of things that he's taking in all area. So, we are, so this is basically kind of, uh, I mean, it is very unfair to say, but let's say we are looking at a 60 percentile calculation being done through Julia, and we are looking at back, uh, ink, decimal, tint. This obviously has to be rationalized, not all of them are very logical at this juncture. When we did it, it did make a lot of sense to make it a backer, probably doesn't make sense now. Uh, but those, all those things are happening, and this is the kind of benchmark on which we are doing. And these are the graphs. Um, the red and all. So obviously, there is a 500, I mean 50% reduction on that part, on that part. This is what's interesting, and the database performance is looked at. And I'm on time. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, questions, please. Yes, sir. Um, so you said that you spent almost a year or so uh, doing some of this stuff. Yeah. Now, how much of the gain actually came from just the, you know, making room in your organization? experimenting with a different system mm -hmm. and Very how good much question. of it yeah. came from Julia as a Correct. You know, so let's talk of when we so we are operating C PHP PHP models calling C uh, the kind of maturity we have got as an organization for the business rules obviously Julia has no contribution to that part but when we were looking at a particularly better object and faster way to compute so one of the problems with C is the Missy coding uh, it's very unfortunate. So the kind of skill sets I need to make an optimal program often makes it a constraint factor. And hence, a lot of the business logic which is on the fly is getting done in PHP, which adds to the problem. So the process, algo, tool, all these three together have to be done, and resources, all that is part of the process. So we didn't look at Lua, which we didn't talk of in the previous session, and we didn't look at Go. Uh, Go with Lua embedded so that Lua doesn't thread. Go threads. If you increase, uh, if you create an instance of Lua from inside Go, effectively you are making Lua multi thread. We take that out. Uh, we use some sort of, uh, I don't know if you have heard Sphinx, it's a good text search engine, but you can do some interesting stuff in the compute uh, on C index. So, because it was a C index, we tried that. And we tried Python world, which we have it. Because P is not just PHP, it's Python world. So, what really took the case away was, it was very intuitive to program. And I had my business users who are actually data scientists, mathematicians, who understand the maths and economics of it, being able to deploy a program with slightly more volume needs. Otherwise, they used to become, so programming used to become a spectator sport. When the database guy, the subject matter expert in the business was sitting and telling the thing, no, 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 I don't want that, I want this. So we have taken that. And that's the biggest advantage of a language like Julia come to business and really make it effective to see code as you see or code as you visualize. I guess that's a disadvantage. Does it answer your question? Thank you. Any more? We have time for one more question. Is there? There's none. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. What was the performance of that last time? <laughs> 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 well, I, I mean, it's not, when you look at the graph, you just question, what were you doing for seven years? So I've not preferred to answer that. <laughs> so, but see, we, we got the business to a state where we can deploy Julia, so it has a merit. But of course, with time, you have to move and accept that the fact that it, it is super normally faster. And that gives me a scope of doing more things. So I would actually make Julia come to that level, but probably with 40,000 more computations. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>